Dr. King was here, right here at this very church. He asked the question, who will go with me on the last leg of this movement? Who will go with me? Dogs bit people, lives were lost. A lot of folk went to jail. I feel that my generation was a chosen generation. After the civil rights era, people did kind of go to sleep. And you've awakened and said, hey, wait a minute, this thing is not fixed. It's not just in Birmingham, Alabama. We're dealing with something in America. Neighborhoods ravaged by drugs, yes. young people getting killed, mass incarceration, tearing apart of the black family. I'm just gonna be honest with you, I'm angry. The monster is the same. We have our ideology, we have our hopes, we have our dreams, and we have the future that we want to see. And what do we use to get it? Anything and everything. The younger people think they know it all, and then you got the older people who think they know it all. Yeah. But just imagine what an impact that would make if you put those two know-it-alls together. We're sitting in 16th Street Baptist Church, the site of uh, many mass meetings. It is probably um, best remembered, regretfully, for the bombing that took place on September 15th, 63. Four girls were killed in the bombing. It's sometimes very emotional for me. It brings back a lot of memories. It makes me remember how important the movement was and is, and why we can't forget what it took to get where we are, even though we haven't arrived. How did we let this happen? How did these mass movements, such as the civil rights movement, become? Yes. Okay, we're good now. There's all these barriers that you fought so hard for us not to deal with them, but we still have to overcome them. We're angry. As youth, we're angry. We are now dealing with cops who have no problem taking us out, and even if it's on Facebook, they still gonna get away mm -hmm. with it. Winning the right to vote, mm -hmm. pushing past Jim Crow laws, yes. and, and integrating public places mm -hmm. and schools. I think that the mechanism that we were fighting against also evolved. Instead of overt racism, you have mm -hmm. institutionalized racism. Absolutely. A much more sneaky, um, pervasive uh -huh. racism. To me, Black History Month is a joke. Yeah. You don't teach history of a certain group of people one time a year, mm -hmm. okay? The Civil Rights Movement wasn't just for black people. It was for civil rights for everyone. Unfortunately, the dominant society, which is the white supremacist institution that governs most of these states and schools, doesn't like to acknowledge just how bad things were and is here. How do you fight an institution like that? Take their law and use their laws against them. That hasn't worked. We've been doing that, that hasn't worked. We need to be at the sim simultaneously disrupting that system while we're making sure that the system that we're creating works. So by the time that this one crumbles, we already have one that works. I agree with that. I'm no longer interested in operating within the system that was not made to serve us. So if you're not listening, so we shut down your freeway. Oh, are you inconvenienced? I'm sorry you're inconvenienced. My life is inconvenienced because I was born in a black body. I understand your frustration, and you can see that I have similar frustration. We just handle it differently. We believed in what we stood for. Today it's so hard for me to figure out 
what our young people are standing for. When we had tragedies, we didn't use weapons. We didn't go out and throw firebombs into the stores. With all of this that you see today as a young person, my question to you, do you think that we're going about this or they're going about this in a positive way? Uh, many people, including myself, believe in being prepared because these days if you're going to take me out, I'm not going to make it easy for you. I want to have kids and live for them and tell this story. So many martyrs from your movement did not get to live their story or tell it. It's not fair that for this half of a century that nonviolence has been the response to violent, terrible, destructive acts. I still believe that nonviolence is the way. I believe that. Uh, I lived that. I still live that. Reverend James Bevel, who was a member of Dr. King's cabinet, went to Dr. King and put this suggestion on the table. Dr. King had a fit, not the children. No, no, I'm not hearing it. We're not gonna put those children's lives on the line. Well, Meatball and, and uh, James Bevel and a few others, Hosea Williams out of Atlanta, went back to the drawing table and the first thing that they thought about, well, the policemen and the KKKs probably wouldn't kill our children as fast as they would an adult. So with my generation, now we're dealing with a police state that doesn't have a problem killing children. Adopting nonviolence and something were to happen to us and we don't have any type of way to re not necessarily retaliate but be prepared or protect ourselves I don't want to have that way and I can only imagine what the leaders of um, your movement felt when activists or other volunteers die on your watch so I don't know what to do with that like how do you implement that knowing or is it just like not being afraid to die I guess another thing that we had in the 60s, we could identify with a leader, mm -hmm. someone who was sort of setting the course. Mm -hmm. I don't see that, or I'm not aware of that mm -hmm. with the millenniums. Who's in charge? I think that leadership, to be honest with you, it does beg room for improvement mm -hmm. with our generation, but also can we in this day and age operate with a leader in the forefront. Tupac, he was a leader, mm -hmm. right? Martin Luther King Jr. was a leader. Mm -hmm. Malcolm X was a leader. But where are they all now? They're dead. They're dead. And many of them that I named were assassinated. Yes. So is it safe to have a leader that's in no, the forefront? And I believe that a lot of millennial organizers feel the same. So mm -hmm. finding a way to practice leadership mm -hmm. without holding that in the public eye position. It feels like our generation, like, and there are people that are rising up that think like me that, that can carry your torch and, and be where y'all were mentally, which is y'all were untouchable. Y'all were out there getting holes and y'all were unfazed. Y'all were singing in the paddy wagon on the way to jail. I know people that would be crying in front of the paddy wagon. They thought we were crazy. I know. And you know what though? <laughs> That's just like mother used to tell us, you treat people with kindness, it'll hurt them more than if you can beat them with 10 sticks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know it's hard. And believe me, when I turn on the TV or Facebook and see all that happen, honey, I have to just turn it off because it, it, it does something to me too. But now, you have to ask yourself, what are we gonna do? Instead of trying to get in, mm -hmm. we're trying to get out. Moving back toward this abolitionist type of feel mm -hmm. of knocking down systems. Do we push for policy against the electoral college? Or do we organize a political party? I mean, there are so many different ways 
to deal with something now that we're in. Yeah. We're, we're in the system. We have our right. We can register. Mm -hmm. But now we're dealing with apathy. We need to have as many people that were at mm -hmm. those mass meetings mm -hmm. today yeah. filling the chambers, yeah. being in city council meeting, mm -hmm. paying attention. We need that. There are going to be a variety of obstacles mm -hmm. and, and walls to overcome. But coming together and sharing beliefs, interests, and values, that's the first step. Mm -hmm. And the civil rights movement has shown us that even the most marginalized, oppressed mm -hmm. people can do this. Not a mass meeting ended without us singing, We Shall Overcome. And the chain link bonding meant so much. We, that meant we held on to each other to protect each other, and we were not going to let each other go. Thank you. You want to sing that one? Sure, but okay. I don't know it. We shall. Oh, yes, I do. I'm sorry. <laughs> Everybody know that. They know that in China. <laughs> <laughs> we shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. My generation says today. Today. Yeah. All right. But deep in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome today.